Good evening everybody, today we're back for another trip to Buckethead Land to take a look at Pike 30 Mannequin Cemetery. So let's begin. Woo! Released October 5th, 2013, Pike 30 Mannequin Cemetery was the second Pike album released that month, dropping the day after Pike 28 Feathers, because Buckethead loves dropping albums out of sequence. The nine track album kicks off with track one, Melted Glasses. And if the album's title didn't give it away that this was gonna be a heavy one, then the opening bars of Melted Glasses certainly does. Heavy metal drop tuned riffage with some glorious super mean Dimebag Daryl-esque squeals. At just under three minutes, it's the album's second shortest track, but a very solid opener. Track 2, Purse of Holes, continues with the heavy, with a ridiculous amount of riffs and changes in its three and a half minute duration. Each riff could have easily made up its own song, but Buckethead throws it all in there. Although not as enjoyable as track 1, it's a good addition to the album. Track 3, Cobwebs in the Calf is another solid addition with an outstanding drum track carrying it through. There's numerous foot stomping head banging moments, especially around the 50 second and 2.5 and minute mark, and would make for an excellent song live. Good stuff. Track 4, Faded Fingernail Polish, immediately locks onto a beat and delivers more of the same. Heavy drums, heavy rippage, three and a half minutes in and out. Maybe not as strong as tracks 1 and 3, but still enjoyable. Track 5, the comically titled Hat That Smells Like an Old Bookstore, is the album's shortest track at just under two and a half minutes. And up to this point, it's the album's least spectacular track. Though enjoyable, it feels like you've kind of already heard it in the previous songs. Track 6, Wearings Were, is one of the better flowing songs from the album. It doesn't slow itself down or interrupt itself, and the three and a half minutes fly by. Enjoyable track, up there with tracks 1 and 3 as a standout. Track 7, Pile of Parts, has some of the album's better, more enjoyable riffs, and much like the previous track, has a great flow. For me, along with track 1, Melted Glasses, it's the album's best song, and one you can easily listen to again. Track 8, Shoes Without Socks, starts off slow before locking onto a beat and riding with it. Really kicking in around the 1 minute mark with an excellent riff that I wish would have been played for a lot longer. That being said, the rest of the song is solid and one of the album's better tracks. <laughs> The album concludes with its title track and longest track, Mannequin Cemetery. 20 seconds in, it goes into fifth gear at a frantic pace. Like the previous track, it locks onto an excellent riff around one minute in, and again, unfortunately, doesn't stick with it or go back to it. 
The song somewhat loses its flow later on midway and doesn't quite get it back. But it does end the same way the album started with some sweet dime bag squeals. Overall, Pike 30 is definitely one for metalheads, and although it doesn't have the wow factor or any 4 or 5 star songs, it's solid and consistent throughout, with tracks 1 and 7, Melted Glasses and Pile of Parts being the standouts. Personally, I find the songs far more enjoyable when played on their own, mixed in with other Pike songs, rather than listening to the whole album from start to finish, because by the end, the songs might start to feel like they're much of a muchness. After adding up the rating I gave for each track, it came to 62%, which I categorize as good and feels about right. You can find my individual song ratings and breakdown on our website, natanet.com. So what's your rating for Pike 30? To work out what percentage you give the album, rate each song out of 5 stars, add up your total and divide it by the total score possible, which for Pike 30 is 45, then times it by 100.